While at Home Depot shopping for a big panel of wood on which to stage games of 40k, because my dining room table is just a little too small. Anyways, I took a wander down the electric aisle and the outlet boxes caught my eye. I'd recently rewatched the classic Irwin Allen movie The Swarm with Michael Caine, and as I looked at these rectangular ones, this bit came to mind. I can load it up with little bits and pieces to make it more industrial and sci-fi looking, and this will be an access point to some sort of underground environment. Okay, first up, a nice reinforced door. I like the locking teeth jewel kind of sci-fi door like these. So I grabbed some cardboard and started marking out the door edge using a 45 degree angle. Next up, the door frame and a backing panel upon which everything will be mounted. I grabbed my X-Acto and removed everything. Then, some thin strips that will frame the entire door, a sort of steel plating surround. With the frame placed on the mounting panel, I made sure the strips stuck out just a little bit. Hmm, the door is a little big for the outlet box. And you know what? I just don't like the look of this. Okay, I'm just gonna chuck it, put it in my bits box for some future project, and try something else. Cardboard failed me, on to foam core. This time, I'm going to make some nice angled upper corners. Make it look a little less like a mundane door. I cut out a frame like before, and this time, the cardboard strips are going to be glued into position to hide the foam core interior that is now on full view, and it will probably get melted when I prime this. I traced the foam core frame onto the cardboard, cut it out, and then cut it neatly in half and trimmed off just a little sliver so that when I glue the frame to the cardboard panels, there's just a small gap between the doors. I glued the two toothed edges into position, slightly apart to accentuate the gap in the door, and then cut out additional cardboard strips a little wider than the depth of the foam core, and then glued these along the inside face of the frame. Okay, time to start decorating. Chenkao half beads, grabbed with tweezers, dipped in glue, and placed at the ends, the corners, and the middle of the top. And then I spaced additional ones between them so that everything is nice and symmetrical. Okay, that's the doors done. I cut out a few rectangles of foam core and then added the cardboard strips to seal them in on all sides except for one, which I left intentionally exposed. I stabbed three cocktail sticks into one bit of foam core and then pushed the other piece onto the end of the sticks so that they look like conduits passing between two extended panels. And I dropped a big half bead on it, well, just because. Another panel of foam core surrounded by cardboard and this one gets a little line of beads just to spruce it up. Next up, the cap from a spice bottle and I cut out a circle of wire mesh and inserted it in to be some sort of filter intake outlet device, I don't know. To further conceal its original appearance, some bands of cardboard around the base and I added an elastic band to hold it firmly right there while it dries. Now. Removing the screws and the small panels, which I'm going to keep, so maybe drop one or two of them randomly around as additional accents. As usual, a trio of L-pipes from the big old bag of pipes, and I added the customary layers of random bands. On one of them, I vertically added some cotton buds with the fuzzy stuff trimmed off. A few strips of cardboard, and I glued one at a 90 degree angle to the other to get a nice L-shaped beam, which I dropped a line of beads along to give it some texture. Then, a little rectangle of cardboard, and I dropped a bead on it, and I used this to just decorate the conduit panel a little more. Additional accents are one of the weird grid panels from the Emma's townhouse. There will be a sort of grill, which I'm adding beads to the corners of as rivets or bolts that are holding it in place. At work, reps sometimes brought in freebies. One time it was these three pens in a custom holder that looked like vials of sci-fi contagion, so I grabbed one. So I'm going to repurpose the holder and use it as a venting tower. 
three cooling outlets for the underground bunker that this access point provides entrance to. Now that I have a bunch of things to apply, let's start assembling and see where we are. First up, gluing the door into position, and then dropping the pen holder onto the top to hide the embossed product information, and then with the two L-shaped pieces placed on either side to conceal the join. Next up, the three pipes on the short side opposite the doors. Next, the panel with the four beads and the spice cap go on one long side, and on the other long side, the townhouse piece and the two panels with the cocktail sticks. And I glued one of the blue panels that came with the box on an edge just for fun. And now, a while ago, I ended up having to site verify a lab place that had been doing animal experimentation. They had moved out, but had left behind tons of stuff. The stuff I saw in there, I just can't unsee. It was literally the stuff of nightmares. Seeing as it was all destined for the dumpster, I snagged a few things. A biohazard suit so I could do a Heisenberg Halloween costume, some biohazard masks and other protective gear and storage, and a few bags of these electrodes, because why not? So I dropped them in place using the sticky electrode pad to set it in place and then bent the wire into position and then added some dabs of soup glue to ensure it stays there. If you haven't got access to electrodes to see what goes on when you're dissecting rats, rabbits and monkeys, I don't know, maybe use a hole punch on some cardboard and extract the resultant circles of card and then just glue them in and use string or some normal wire to mimic this effect. Around now, I thought about adding the pens back in. And, well, they look okay, a little too tall, so maybe make them shorter and do something to make them all match it in colour on the inside. I took them apart and put half of the pens back into the pen holder, but they were being held aloft by the interior structure. Okay, so I grabbed my drill and a decent sized bit and just drilled through so that the hole goes all the way in. Then, I disassembled the pens and used the drill to gouge through the springs and internal structure so I can wash out the ink and add my own tesseract green glow or a moot green interior because I want them to all look the same hue. But in the end, you know what? This is going to make it look more like some sort of mixing station or other factory item. And I'm going to stick with my bunker access and leave the top as three venting channels for the underground layer. Okay, now that I'm committed, a blast all over of matte black primer. It took a few goes because I had to turn it around and upside down and everything so I could get into all the nooks and crannies. And then my customary dry brush of mithril silver to accentuate edges and raised areas, the frame, the jaws of the door, the beads and the wires. So here we have it so far. This didn't take very long at all and it looks really good. One last touch to honour the inspirational cinematic moment, a label. The bunker in the swarm is marked as X70, so I used Word and the stencil font and printed a piece of paper with about 10 different sizes of the label so I can pick the one I liked best. After selecting it, I deployed my X-Acto and cut it out. And then with a light brush of flash gits yellow, I added the stencil to several sides. And here we have it. A vast, sprawling underground complex is accessed by several fortified points, of which this is one. X70 and the others like it have a pair of dense blast doors that slide apart to allow access to an elevator that takes you down deep into the ground and into the fortified complex. This building also acts as an air exchange and filter system and is the point where several underground pipes rise up to deliver power and liquid to the hidden warren below. Are the occupants of the complex still alive? Have they all fled or have they been killed? Is it a scene of grotesque carnage down there, the walls spattered with gore and the floors choked with sundered body parts? Or? Are the people still down there, dug in, awaiting an imperial victory on their world before emerging? Are they helping coordinate the fight while marshalling their own resources, readying to pile onto the elevators, rise up and pour forth to mount a sudden and brutal surprise counter-offensive? <laughs> <laughs>